Today's video is brought to you by Bespoke Post. Hey, brother. Oh, man. Let's talk about Draco Malfoy, the antithesis to Harry Potter. You know, other than Voldemort. <laughs> He's the Slytherin to his Gryffindor, the Dark Arts to his Defense Against, the Arrogant to his Humble, the Death Eater to his Army of Dumbledore. And the Seeker to his, well, they're actually both Seekers, so that one doesn't work. The Nimbus 2001 to his Nimbus 2000. Even though it's only like 1992 when Draco gets his, I don't know, I always felt like those like numbers were kind of weird. Draco in a lot of ways is very different from Harry. When he arrives at Hogwarts is with a head full of steam and an expectation that he's going to be important. In this case, Harry is the complete opposite. He shows up being very important, although has no expectation of it. And I'm just Harry, just Harry. I'm pretty sure you mean hippo. I'm just hippo. Stream people get that joke. But one thing the two absolutely both have in common throughout their years is considerable talent in the field of magic. Harry can repel the Imperius curse the very first time it's ever used on him and Draco ultimately masters oculum, oculumency. I always hated that word. Occlumency? Occlumency, I know. Word. All right, anyway, I'll try again. Draco masters occlumency as a student. Harry faces down a dragon and mer people and a sphinx. While Draco successfully mends a two-way cabinet that gives the Death Eaters access to Hogwarts, a feat that Dumbledore literally did not think possible. But one of Harry's biggest and most impressive feats in the field of magic is his ability to cast a fully-fledged corporate Patronus in just his third year. And that's a skill that I don't think that Draco ever had to call on, but I do believe would have been fully capable of if given the proper circumstances. Which as always brings forth the question, if he could, and again, I believe he can cast a Patronus, then what form would it take? Today, we discuss. Guys, before we dive on in, I need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love mail sometimes because as it turns out, when you become an adult, frequently mail is like bills and not birthday cards or your Aunt Teresa's famous chocolate chip cookies. Truth fact, when I was in college, my Aunt Teresa used to send cookies as a surprise and it was amazing. But with Bespoke Post and their box of awesome, I know that at least once a month, I get to be so excited for the mail. Here's how it works. Each month you get to choose from one of their themed and curated boxes and then it shows up at your door and you love it. That's it. This month, me personally, the box that I went for is called Parked. It is a ridiculously cool and comfortable portable camp chair that folds down to basically nothing. And as an added bonus, it pairs super nicely with the box that I chose last month, on tap, which is a totally gorgeous growler with a couple of stainless steel cups that keeps your coffee hot or your drinks cold. And they've got loads of other options to pick from every single month. They come packed with over $70 worth of swag and only cost $45 a month for the subscription. It's free to sign up and you can skip or cancel at any time. So if you guys wanna get 20% off when you sign up for your first monthly box of awesome, you can do so by going to boxofawesome.com and use promo code super at checkout. Again, that is 20% off your first box when you go to boxofawesome.com. Use promo code super at checkout. Link is in the description down below. Also want to give a huge shout out to Alice Angel 13 and Music who emailed us with this idea. Thank you so much. It was awesome. Okay, so first let's chat just a little bit about Draco and the options that might immediately come to mind as potentials for his Patronus. Right out of the gate for me, the one that of course immediately comes to mind is without a doubt a drag... Ferret! You thought I was gonna say dragon, didn't you? Ha! Well, you are correct. I was using clever misdirection to great effect, I might add. Well done, Ben. Well done. But just stick with me for a hot segundo, if you don't mind. Let's think about this. Mad-Eye turns Draco into what during his fourth year? That's right, a ferret. Coincidence? 
Yes, but consider this. Hagrid feeds what to the hippogriffs in their third year? That's right, ferrets. I'm gonna get the nice dead ferret. And as a result, who gets bitten by a hippogriff out of sheer resemblance to a ferret? Oh, it's killed me. It's killed me. I mean, seriously, I can't make this stuff up. Psych! I totally can. You guys just keep falling for it. Well done, me! But now that I know that all of you are properly on the edge of your seat, consider this. Words. What is ferret-like? A weasel. And who could we possibly describe out of the entire Harry Potter saga as more weaselly? I mean, honestly, I can't even think of nine examples. Okay, but seriously, despite his kind of general twitchiness, I don't actually think that his Patronus is a ferret. Although I think I had some of you for a minute. So moving right on down the list of other likely candidates here, your mind probably jumps and fittingly so to dragon because I used that misdirect before. So I planted it in your brain and that's how you got there. Inception. Or you could have gotten there because his name is Draco, which literally means dragon. <laughs> Think my name was funny, do you? Personally, I never understand what is supposed to be funny about this. His name is Dragon. How is that not awesome? Awesome names aside, Dragon did actually come across my mind as we were trying to sort out what would be a possibility. Dragons are in fact a form that we know a Patronus can take, and we know that it is one of the three rarest Patronuses you can have, which would give it extra cool points. And I don't wanna brag or anything, but mine's a Thestral, which is one of the other three rarest. Just kidding, I'm totally bragging. Get this, Jay's is a Fox Terrier. <laughs> But actually, in case you are wondering, now that we've mentioned the other two, the third other rarest Patronus you can have is a Phoenix. So if Draco's was a dragon, that would kind of tie into the idea that he is consistently the opposite of Harry. I mean, obviously Harry's Patronus is actually a stag, so not the opposite in that way, but Harry is very similar to a Phoenix. I mean, he literally does come back from the dead. That said, there actually is a character whose Patronus is a Phoenix, and that is, of course, Dumbledore, which is also kind of a unique case. You see, because it's not that common for someone's Patronus to take on the form of their favorite animal. And according to Pottermore, when it does, it means it is an indicator of obsession or eccentricity. Here is a wizard who may not be able to hide their essential self in common life, who may indeed parade tendencies that other might prefer to conceal. And so to that end, I began wondering like what could be Draco's favorite animal? To which I think the answer almost has to be snake. By the way, see this shiny snake shirt? They're available at supercarlinbrothers.store. Check it out. But seriously, I bet if you didn't immediately think dragon or ferret, which I still argue has a little bit of merit, ferret merit, if you will, then snake is still probably the next most obvious option. It's even the very first thing that we even listed in this video to compare Draco to Harry, his Slytherin to Harry's Gryffindor. And of course the house mascot for Slytherin is in fact the snake. And Draco pretty much embodies the characteristics of a Slytherin to a T. Not that your schoolhouse really has all that much to do with it anyway. Otherwise we'd see a whole bunch of, you know, gold lions, silver snakes, bronze eagles, and black badgers. Also all of available at supercarlinbrothers.store. But Draco's a unique case here. He's not just sorted into Slytherin. He is sorted into Slytherin instantly. Slytherin! Like, I would argue he is the exact opposite of a hat stall. This was so instant, in fact, that I don't even think that the sorting hat would have taken into consideration the potential for Draco to want to be sorted into another house because Draco so embodies the Slytherin personality that there was no circumstance in which he would ever want to be in any other house anyway. Even compared to Ron Snakely, who comes from an entire family of Gryffindors, like, it still takes a minute. Ha! Another Weasley. I know just what to do with you, Gryffindor! Did you hear that? I said Ron Snakely. That was a callback to before when we made that Weasley joke. And he does continue to kind of be connected to snakes. Like when he's dueling Harry in Chamber of Secrets, he literally summons a snake. Although of course, ever the one-upsman, Harry actually like just calms it down with his ability to, you know, speak to snakes. Take that, Draco. 
I'm even a better snake than you. But honestly, I think even going back to that bit of information we have from Pottermore, I don't even think figuring out Draco's favorite animal is useful in determining his Patronus here. After all, Draco is not exactly a wizard who may not be able to hide their essential self in common life, whatever that means. What it means is that Draco is constantly hiding his essential self, masking his true personality by boasting about his family. You wait till my father hears about this. Oh, my father will hear about this. Wait until my father hears that Dumbledore's got this oaf teaching classes. Dude, we know. Stop writing home all the time. I'm just kidding, by the way. Write home as often as you want. Actually, call your parents after this video. But this hiding of his essential self is kind of the tragedy that is the character of Draco Malfoy. That at the end of the day, despite all of his boasting about the glory of his family, he's still just a normal kid, you know, with emotions and problems. And we actually do get to learn a little bit more about that, strangely thanks to Moaning Myrtle of all ghosts. I mean, he's sensitive, people bully him, and he feels lonely and hasn't got anybody to talk to, and he's not afraid to show his feelings and cry. Now, to be fair here, the bully in question is Voldemort, and he is threatening to kill him. So. The threat be real. But interestingly, this dual personality that we start to see out of him might be the greatest indicator of what his potential Patronus might actually be. Going back to Pottermore, if you are someone who is hiding their essential self, then the Patronus will represent the awakened secret self that lies dormant until needed, but which must now be brought to light, whatever that means. What it means is, is that for Draco, his secret self is that normal kid that's deep inside of him, the vulnerable one that Myrtle meets in the bathroom, while on the other hand, his non-secret self is arrogant and boastful. So we started looking for an animal that is known for its arrogance, but at the end of the day is just putting on a show. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I think about animals putting on a show, I always think about those like birds of paradise that like literally put their feathers all up in a weird way and do a really cool dance. But I also didn't exactly think that Draco's Patronus would be a small tropical island bird, or for that matter, the Duke of Weaselton. But you know what? There is actually a very similar kind of bird that is glowing pearly white that actually lives on the Malfoy property. He actually drew his wand again, pointing it over his companion's head, but the source of the noise proved to be nothing more than a pure white peacock, strutting majestically along the top of the hedge. A peacock! And oh man, it is so perfect in more ways than you can even realize. First of all, male peacocks are known for showing off their feathers to the other birds around them to essentially win praise and be admired. This is literally what Draco is doing constantly. But here's the thing, when peacocks finally put down their feathers and stop trying to impress everyone, they're just kind of like normal birds. And just like the peacock, when Draco finally stops boasting and taunting and bullying everyone else, it turns out that he's just a normal kid with real problems and emotions. That said, I would like to go one step further and say that I think that it is not just a peacock, but an albino white peacock like the ones that are already at Malfoy Manor. A characteristic that would continue to set him apart from other peacocks, just like how a Draco is set apart from the other Death Eaters. Of course, as a Patronus, you wouldn't really be able to tell that it was like specifically like a pure white because they're all already pure white, but you know, but we'll be able to tell, we know. But the comparisons don't just end at his personality, it actually also continues to work as a really nice foil to his relationship with Harry. Because peacocks, as it turns out, are often compared to, wait for it, Phoenixes. I mean, for one thing, they do kind of just look like them. But according to what's hyphen your hyphen sign.com, many schools of thought compare the resurrection of the phoenix to a modern day peacock. Along these lines, the peacock is a colorful symbol of transformation like the phoenix. The alchemy peacock can remind us that we can rise out of our darkest moments. Rise out of our darkest moments, you say? Why does that sound so familiar? Because Draco has to rise out of his own darkness. Also, I think this is kind of cool because the only other time the white peacocks are mentioned throughout the entirety of the series is when Fenrir is bringing the golden trio through the gates to Malfoy Manor. Come on, said Greyback to his men, and the prisoners were shunted through the gates and up the drive. Between high hedges that muffled their footsteps, Harry saw a ghostly white shape above him and realized it was an albino peacock. Now, maybe inside of the book, this is just supposed to be a callback to earlier because it's supposed to indicate where they are in the wizarding world 
world, which is Malfoy Manor. But that's actually already the title of this chapter, and I think it's actually a callback to a different moment in Deathly Hallows the Silver Doe. This is the second time in the book where Harry is confronted with a ghostly white animal. Now, to be fair, I do think in this case it is just a bird, but I also think that it symbolizes the protection that Draco is about to provide the Golden Trio once they're inside by not being able to identify them when he clearly knows exactly who they are. Draco constantly serves as a foil to Harry, and his Patronus being a peacock kind of continues that idea. All the way down to how each of them views their own reputation. Like, Draco is a less fantastic phoenix in all the ways that Harry is a more fantastic peacock. And that is why Draco's Patronus is a peacock. What do you guys think? Be sure to leave all your thoughts in the towel section down below. Do you think it could be something different? Let us know. But guys, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like some more Patronus speculation action from us, you can check out this video right here where we go into what Newt's Patronus could possibly be because apparently it will eventually be important. But otherwise, guys, until next time, bye.